Hey everyone and welcome back to Bear It In Mind. If you're studying A-level psychology and want to feel more confident about research methods, well I've got something just for you. Let's be honest, research methods can be one of the trickier parts of the course. It's not just about memorising definitions, it's about applying your knowledge under pressure, especially when it comes to things like choosing the right statistical test, using critical values correctly, understanding significance levels, and getting your head around type 1 and type 2 errors. To help you out ahead of paper 2, I've put together a mini video series where I cover some of the most commonly asked and commonly misunderstood areas of research methods. I've also made sure to include some of the more challenging topics too, all broken down into clear, bite-sized videos. Whether you're revising, catching up, or just looking to strengthen your understanding, this series is designed to help you think like a top grade student. On the screen now is a list of all the parts of research methods that are covered in the videos. This will cover some of the most commonly asked exam questions, how to tackle tricky topics like significance levels, statistics tests and how to know when results are actually significant or not, and interactive questions to test your understanding, including real past exam questions so you can see exactly how to approach and answer them. If you're a member of Bear It In Mind, the full series is now live over on Scholar of the Mind. And to give you a head start, here's the first video where I share four top tips for tackling research methods with confidence. Let's dive in. Hello everyone and welcome to this video series exploring research methods for AQA A-level psychology. In each section I'll explain what it means, give you some multiple choice questions to check your understanding and then walk you through an exam question on that particular part of the topic so you can see how to answer it. Let's dive straight in. First of all, let's start with my four top tips for the research methods section of the exam. Number one, in this study. One of the most important things to remember when answering questions on research methods is this. You must apply your knowledge to the scenario in the question. This is absolutely crucial. You can write the most perfect definitions or explanations, but if you don't link them to the specific study described in the question, you'll lose a big chunk of marks. So here's a practical tip. Write at the top of your paper, before you do anything else, write this down. Apply to the study. What you're looking for in every question is any reference to the study. Look for phrases like this, in this study. Why? Because those words, in this study, are your signal. Every time you see that phrase or some version of it, the examiner is asking you to apply your knowledge to the scenario. Don't skip it. Number two, annotate the scenario. Often at the start of the research method section of the exam, you will be given a scenario. This contains lots of important information. The examiner hasn't written this because they like writing sentences, but to give you important information that you're going to need for the questions to come. What you want to do is when you're reading through the scenario, don't just skim it, annotate it. Not just highlight it, but scribble down notes and thoughts. Every sentence is included for a reason. Often there's key information hidden in what seems like background detail and annotating it helps you make sense of what's going on before you even get to the questions. Here's an example. This scenario says, a psychologist wanted to investigate whether exercise would affect stress levels in 15 year olds. So what do you see in that sentence? Did you notice that exercise is your independent variable and stress levels are your dependent variable? But we're not told yet specifically how they measured stress, neither what the conditions of the IV are. We'll need to look for that later in the scenario. And note that they are under 16, so there are potentially going to be ethical issues relating to parental consent. Previous research into the effects of exercise on stress in teenagers had shown that exercise decreased stress levels. Here we would need to have spotted that previous research means that there will be a directional hypothesis to write. The psychologist decided to use a repeated measures design to investigate the effects of exercise on stress levels in 20, 15 year old students. All the students were approaching their end of year exams. Here we see that it's a repeated measures design 
one group doing both conditions. And maybe at this point you can remember the strengths and limitations of a repeated measures design. There are no participant variables, but there is the problem of order effects. And you might be able to even think of a way of dealing with order effects at this point, and that's through counterbalancing. For condition A, students were required to complete a two kilometer run during their morning break time each school day for one week. In condition B, students continued their normal activities in the playground during their morning break time each school day for one week. Here we see both conditions of the independent variable. At the end of each week of the investigation for both condition A and condition B, each student was asked to rate their levels of stress on a rating scale of 1 to 10, where the higher the self-reported rating, the greater the stress levels. Here we see the dependent variable more specifically is stress on a rating of 1 to 10, which is a level of measurement which is ordinal data, and the information you need when asked about statistical tests. So hopefully you can see the value of annotating the scenario, and the aim is to anticipate what they might ask you in the coming questions. Tip number three, annotate the exam question. When you do get to the question, always annotate that too. There are three things to identify. The command words, what exactly are you being asked to do? In this study, highlight this phrase every time you see it. And how many marks is it worth? You need to pay attention to the number of marks that are there for that question, and that indicates to you the depth and detail that you need to go into to gain those marks. Tip number four, watch for the change. Finally, be aware that the scenario might change partway through the exam paper. The scenario might evolve or introduce a new variable, and if you don't notice it, you could end up answering questions based on the wrong version of the study. Many students make this mistake, so keep your eyes peeled. For example, in the same exam paper we just looked at, before question 20, there was a change in the scenario. Your psychology teacher has read about the beneficial effects of exercise, so asks you to design a study to see if there's a correlation between time spent swimming and anxiety levels in A-level psychology students. Originally, the study was an experiment using a repeated measure design into exercise and stress, but now it's changed to a correlation looking at swimming and anxiety levels. So when in question 22, they ask you for an appropriate statistical test, they are not referring to the first study, but now the second. Now let's dive into some specific parts of research methods, starting with hypotheses. 